Today our water icon person is Dr. Robert Colson. He's currently a professor of the Department of Entomology here at Texas A&M University. He started teaching here in the 1970s and his research covers issues from landscape scale to ecology science and has been conducting many interdisciplinary research activities in the Knowledge Engineering Laboratory, or KEL. Thank you. Good morning, Dr. Colson. Thanks morning. for being here. My <laughs> pleasure. Um, a few background questions for you, please. Have you always been interested in science and nature ever, ever since you were a young boy? Yeah, I have. The, uh, I think uh, uh, as a young boy, I lived in the uh, uh, southern United States and had the opportunity to experience nature uh, up close and personal. And uh, that carried over into being able to learn about nature in an organized way and so when I was in high school and then on to college and graduate school then I pursued uh, that study in more depth. Do you uh, have any role models when you were younger? Any you looked up to? Well I, I think the first role model that I had in science was uh, Eugene Odom uh, who basically is the individual who popularized ecology and certainly the ecosystem concept of ecology. Uh, he was a professor at the University of Georgia and about the time I was graduating from undergraduate school, he was in the prime of his career, and this was at the uh, onset of environmentalism. And so the uh, ecology program at the University of Georgia was really provocative, and the students that were there at the time I was a student there were also really an involved, uh, interesting group of people that many of them went on to uh, successful careers as ecologists as a result of that experience. What has inspired you to become an entomologist? Well, it, there was some serendipity there. I uh, was an uh, undergraduate student in biology uh, and didn't really know where that was leading. And one summer, I had the opportunity to work for a company called the Bartlett Tree Expert Company. And uh, this was up in Stamford, Connecticut. And they had a laboratory called the Bartlett Tree Research Laboratory. And they had a couple of entomologists, a plant pathologist, and a plant physiologist. And mostly they did extension kinds of work uh, on uh, various aspects of tree problems for the company. Insects have always been fascinating organisms to me. The variety and the diversity and the form and the function of insects is truly remarkable. But I never had any way of really organizing that. And so the whole thing was a perplexing study until I found out that you could systematize it. and make it into something that uh, could be studied in an orderly fashion. And these, these fellows uh, uh, showed me how to do that. The, the Knowledge Engineering Laboratory is a, a facility uh, that was uh, created by the um, uh, College of Agriculture and Life Sciences back in about 1984. And uh, what exactly does knowledge engineering mean? There was a technology uh, called artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence had several branches to it. Uh, pattern matching was one of them, but the one that we uh, latched onto was um, expert systems. And basically these were uh, computer codes that um, could process rules. And so we could ask a manager, well, how do you make a decision? How do you reach a decision? And then we started to try to integrate uh, the other kinds, the other representations of knowledge, and we showed that that could be done. You could write computer code that could use output from simulation models, use output from expert systems, tabular databases, and all uh, together uh, arrive at a, a pretty good and, and supported decision with regard to planning or problem solving or decision making. Um, so today we're, we still do much of the same kind of work that we did in the past. We develop computer codes for planning, problem solving, and decision making, but the approaches are different. The, the fundamental difference is, is that they're all, all of these systems that we build today are uh, spatially referenced systems. They involve using geographic information system technology plus heuristic knowledge plus tabular information and in in simulation model output and that sort of thing. How do you believe landscape ecology will evolve in the Anthropocene and do you believe human intervention is bad or good? And certainly the reality is, is that human beings have, have modified this planet in a substantial way and what the consequences of that those modifications are is, is certainly the, the subject of a great deal of speculation and concern. 
Um, back when I was going to graduate school, there was a fellow named Paul Early published a book called Zero Population Growth. This was back in the, in the mid-60s. Even before him, Maltus projected that we were approaching the carrying capacity of the planet uh, and that uh, uh, the effects of this, of course, would be dire. Well, it turns out that in the case of, um, of Maltus, uh, modern agriculture came in and we found out we could feed a lot more people than what he projected. And in the case of the zero population growth, um, we found that the planet could accommodate many more people than uh, what was projected. Nevertheless, the, 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 certainly the, all of the global systems that affect the environment that we live in or the, the planet that we live on or have been affected by humans. That's the reality of it and that's not going to change. One of the, the uh, luminary landscape ecologists is a fellow named uh, Richard Foreman, RTT Foreman, professor at Harvard University. He had a, a comment that I thought was, was poignant and, and maybe a little trite but nevertheless poignant um, and it was think uh, globally but act locally. And so that's basically the, all the land use management organizations are doing manipulations or, uh, in, at specific, in, in specific landscapes. So they're acting locally and how those local actions affect uh, the global world is uh, certainly open for speculation and that's something that uh, anybody that's involved in either earth sciences or landscape ecology or ecology in general, those sorts of questions how is what I'm doing, how is this affecting the global world? That kind of question is something that's always on their, I think always on their mind. It certainly is in, in my case. But I'm not sure how you, you plan for, uh, for an orchestrated modification or manipulation of the planet. I don't know with the, the size of the populations and different government agencies and the uh, the reality of, of feeding the planet, all those things are, are uh, have importance in their own right and how they come together and what the effect is on the, on the planet is somebody smarter than I is going to have to figure that out. What advice would you give to students <clears throat> who would like to choose a similar career path as, as yourself? Well, uh, the I think you have to have a passion uh, for learning. You have to be curious. Uh, I've, I've always thought that learning was fun. And then second, you need to develop the domain knowledge associated with your area of interest. And then the third thing is you need uh, to develop a toolbox that will allow you to do something with, the, with that knowledge that you have and with the discovery of new knowledge if you, do, if you get involved in doing research. Uh, Texas A&M University is a really good place to go to graduate school. I mean, your uh, water program is one that uh, is addressing really serious issues to the state of Texas as well as globally. And so, again, there's a landscape ecology uh, element to that or component to it. And uh, the um, so send some people over to take Into Geography 625, and we'll tell them about landscape ecology. Thank you very much, sir. My pleasure. Thank you.